afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Just a quick job today guys, I'm going to be installing this Iridium spark plug on the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Now, it's a very very quick job, it only takes a few minutes, but what I'm going to do is, before I install the new plug, I'm going to take these uh, plugs inside and we're going to talk about the differences between them and why you may or may not want to spend the extra money. Probably the first thing worth noting guys is the Royal Enfield toolkit itself, it's really quite a good toolkit, it's quite small but it does what you need. It's actually got a spark plug uh, tool in there. So this is all you need in order to take the spark plug out and replace it. You're probably aware of this guys, but the spark plug on the Himalayan is on the right hand side here at the top of the engine block. And I've just removed uh, the plug here. Yeah, so just set that to the side for the time being. So you want to get this in here. You can just use a screwdriver, an owl key or whatever. And then just, there we go. It's not that particularly tight. A spark plug shouldn't be guys, yeah? What you want to do with a spark plug is put it in sort of finger tight and then give it probably even less than a quarter turn. Once I've got that loosened I'm just using this because it gives me a little bit of extra purchase when I'm unscrewing this. Now if this is overly tight try not to force it. You might want to just spray a little bit of you know WD-40 or something on there. Not in to the head obviously <laughs> but around this bolt here just to let it soak in for five minutes just before you go taking that off this plug is the original plug it's got 10,000 miles on it UR5CC India yeah so this is a Bosch plug that's you know obviously it's been sourced and it's been put in the bike when it was built in India probably at the the latter end of last year before it was shipped to the UK you see at the end here it's starting to go a little bit on the flat side Measuring and adjusting spark plugs, especially in the Western world, seems to be a little bit of a dying art. People have a tendency, quite well, they're, they're quite inexpensive. Yeah, people have a tendency to, you know, throw them away and just replace them. This is a, a sort of standard copper core plug, and in comparison to the iridium plug that I've got here, that means you get a little bit more resistance in there. The reason we need to check the gap on these over time is copper. It's a great conductor of electricity, but over time with that continual spark, this starts to wear away. And it means that when the spark's trying to find that ground, it can start to become a little bit more inconsistent. The plug that's going in here, guys, is the CR8EIX. If you check like your Hitchcock's website, for example, this is the one that they'll recommend for your, your Himalayan. The tip is different, and I'll explain that in a minute. If I flip this around, you'll see that this is also different. This here is common to motorcycles in general. Here we go. So it's a little bit tight, but you just want to crack that with a pair of pliers. And then what you end up with essentially is, you know, the same head on there. So you must remove that if you still have your standard um, Royal Enfield uh, HT lead on there, which, you know, 99.9% .9 of people are going to have that, usually for cars, but it depends on the type of uh, lead that you have. This is still a copper core that's inside here, but it's a thinner copper core, which means it's got less resistance. And that essentially means that you might get a more consistent spark. There's less draw on the battery, basically, when you kick this over. The tip here is where the magic happens. This is your iridium tip. Now, iridium is a very, very hard metal. It takes a long time to wear compared to copper. This will have essentially something like five times the life of this plug here. That doesn't mean that I'm going to run this for 100,000 miles. <laughs> I'm still going to take that out and change it occasionally. As this gap increases over time, then that spark becomes less consistent. There'll be much less wear on this, almost negligible wear on that iridium tip, which means that the spark remains consistent. Iridium is not as efficient when it comes to heat displacement. Plugs obviously heat up hundreds of degrees in the head here, yeah, and then they dissipate heat out of the engine. That's one of the functions of a spark plug. The way that this is configured, it's configured as a colder plug, and that means that it'll actually dissipate more heat. That sounds a bit complex but it's not really. Just do a little bit of research and make sure that you get the right plug. 
If this plug had only done, say, 3,000 miles and it was coming out looking like this, then I would be thinking that the bike's probably running a little bit rich. Yeah, a little bit too black. But given that we're sitting at 10,000 miles, that's about right in terms of the fuel-air mixture. Now, if the bike was running too lean, then obviously the plug wouldn't come out looking silver like this. Yeah, but it'd be much less black than that. Yeah. And you don't want it to be running too lean because that can cause quite a bit of damage to your bike. I'm not necessarily recommending that you go taking this off your bike, yeah, but I just did this, you know, for sort of educational purposes. You can actually buy these online for, you know, about £10 or less. Now, why you would just buy this <laughs> without the entire HT lead, I don't actually know. But I guess this could be damaged in some way. So, basically, this is where your plug goes into, yeah. Now, that's the reason you want to take this off, because it won't fit in this connector here. I don't know if you can see inside here. See that little silver? So, that just slots in there, yeah? And when it's got this rubber boot on here, that holds it nice and tight. If we look at this end here, it just essentially screws straight into that copper HT lead. And again, if it's a higher quality HT lead, all that essentially means is you're going to have less resistance in the cable. Less resistance in the cable means less draw on your battery, less draw on your starter, and a cleaner spark over time. I've just got a little bit of WD-40 on this cloth here. I'm making sure this is nice and clean at the top here. No gunk or anything like that. Yeah, I certainly don't want anything going inside the engine block. I want to just seat this in uh, using my fingers only. Finger tight down into the head. Less than a quarter ton. You see, I'm doing that nice and straight. Because if you're going to cross thread it, this is the time you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, when you've got it down in there. And if you've got this sitting at a bad angle and you try and crank it, you can end up, you know, bending the plug or something or snapping it inside here. It's not made of paper, guys, but when you're putting the plug back on here, just take your time. Yeah, don't force it or wedge it or anything. You don't want to, you know, bend the, the plug or anything inside the, the housing here. Sorry about the weird lighting in here folks, it's night time, I'm sort of trying my best. Well, I've just had the bike for a quick test ride there and I think probably right off the bat is, the first thing I would say is that it's idling better, it's idling smoother. Again, this is one of these little jobs that sometimes you don't realise it really needs done until you do it. The bike's not with misfiring or anything like that, but certainly I think this will make a big difference with regards to the cold starts. There's less draw on that battery to fire that bike up initially, and that can only be a good thing. £10 compared to sort of £3, is it worth the difference? Well, I think long term, it's a bit of a no-brainer, yeah? You're going to get a much more consistent spark for a, a much longer period of time. That's going to be better for your fuel economy, carbon deposits, gunk and stuff that starts to build up. And even if you're not putting something as fancy as an Iridium plug in there, just because the manual says change it every 15,000 kilometres or whatever, it's not necessarily the best advice. You can already see a lot of the corrosion and stuff that's starting to take place on the bolts. You don't really want that welded inside your cylinder head, that's for sure. Now, hopefully this was somewhat useful to somebody somewhere. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below. Maybe even hit that notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video to YouTube. I'll see you in the next one.